Hello, everybody, and welcome to CC Play. Well, not plays, actually, more reads. Tiny Bunny. Uh, this, from what I understand, is a horror, choose your own adventure ish, graphic novel. Uh, I don't know how many chapters of it have been released, but I know at least the first one has. And as you can see, it's got two different languages. I think the other is Russian. Maybe. Let me see if I click on it. Looks maybe like it's Russian. I don't know. Somebody correct me. But uh, I'm going to uh, take a peek at it. I've heard nothing but good things. I love the art style. Uh, so let's take a crack at what is my first time reading to y'all. The wind clawed at my window all night long. It wandered the fields and howled like a hungry beast. An endless song weaved from all sorts of voices, shrill, gentle, sneery, twined in the air. They were shouting and laughing and arguing about something. Someone was running through the snow while casting long shadows that would occasionally creep close to my bed. Our house had a mind of its own, the creaky old mind of a building that had seen a lot in its days, and was seemingly try to share it oh my goodness and was seemingly trying to share its wisdom with the inhabitants. The lonely house faced the forest, and the dark green thicket gazed back with its hollow eyes, rustling, whizzing, swaying back and forth. One could come out and stand at the edge of the forest to reassure themselves there was nobody behind the crooked trees. Fuzzy silhouettes swaying in the wind couldn't possibly do any harm. It's just a play of light and shadow. Just a play. I knew it was just my imagination. I was already twelve after all. Still. Oh, it looks like a fox. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> hey, put away your book. How many times have I told you not to read at the table? It's bad for your health. Look at how slouched you are. Oh. I hid the book. I didn't protest and put the... Uh, nah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm reading poorly this morning. I didn't protest and put the book about Conan the Barbarian aside. I was stuck on a line I couldn't understand after reading it three times anyway. Olya had already finished her breakfast and was munching on some cookies. She was so enthusiastic, she almost looked like your typical girl from commercials. She is adorable! You're not going anywhere until you finish all of it. I, on the other hand, was still trying to drill a hole in the plate with my eyes, as if it would make the porridge disappear. Hazy anxiousness welled up inside, all because of the previous sleepless night, the black forest around our house, and the gloomy wind. The longer I waited, the colder the lumpy white substance became. It looked like a jellyfish from the... Custow? I think that's his Custow. It looked like a jellyfish from the Castal Odyssey. I love that show. I wonder how horrifying the bottom of the ocean is. Pretty spooky, actually. <laughs> or how cold the black forest is at night. The spoon fell out of my hand. Mom showered me with a cold glare from her green eyes. What did I just say? I'll get it. Oh, my name is Anton. Excellent. I had ten seconds to catch my breath before battling the nasty porridge once again. I felt around for the spoon. What is this, carved on the other side of the table? Karina. Ha! <laughs> That's my mom's name. 
I guess she carved it out with something pointy when she was little. She sure was a rascal, damaging the furniture like that. She would scold me for a week if I did something similar, though. Should I remind her about it? No, she's been in a bit of a bad mood lately. I imagined her being my age, sitting under this table. I wonder, was Mom afraid of the dark back then? Or the sounds coming from the attic? Or the thick forest? Ah! Grandmama! I imagined my grandma coming into my little mom's room, sitting at the edge of her bed where Olya sleeps nowadays, and saying this in her soft, smooth voice. I think that's pronounced Tyga. Tyga is a special place, little girl. It's watching you closely, sniffing you out. Trying to discern what kind of beast you are. If you're a good sort, it won't abandon you in times of trouble. But if you're a bad apple, they'll grab you by the side and drag you under the ground. And that would be it. What a lovely and charming mother you must have been. Grandma was caring. She never fought with anybody, never yelled, never swore. But she did tell children horrifying stories about how the forest would eat them if they were naughty. Those were the times, without the maddening screams until late at night, without smashed dishes and mutual accusations. Our parents used to love each other back then. I remember listening in on one of their conversations by chance. They were talking about Grandma getting prepared for her funeral. She'd already bought a casket, and she called it her cute funeral box. Oh, Grandma, do we have the same sense of humor? I feel like we might. Waited for its time in the closet, patiently. It was black, upholstered with meat-colored material on the inside. I saw it when my grandma was getting buried. The house didn't change since the time she was alive. Only all of the photos were gone. Glass-covered pictures with gray faces of my ancestors. They all had a dead but watchful look in their eyes. So I guess after she passed away, Mom and Dad took all the photos down. I crawled out from under the table. Olya was done with her cookies and was looking at my share like a sly woodland critter. Perhaps like a tiny bunny. <laughs> I turned my gaze towards the frosted window. There were a lot of dark pines outside, but they didn't grab my attention. The pattern of frost formed a picture on the glass. Olya, look, it's a fox. It does look like a fox. Where? It looked almost like those optical illusion thingies they put on the back of student notebooks. Oh yeah, the one where you have to like unfocus your eyes and it pops out at you. A mixture of lines at first glance, but if you blur your vision a little bit and look under a certain angle. Not outside, on the window. Look, there's the nose, and here... Hey, eat up. Yes, yes, just a moment. I don't see anything. Hurry up, there's not much left. Ah, oh, there it is. But it still doesn't look like one. You say, even though you now see what I am talking about, but sure, okay. And I'm telling you, it does. Nuh-uh. It does. Stop it. These kids, I swear. Now I couldn't see the fox either. It disappeared. Went away. Only the frosty patterns, similar to stretched out nettle leaves, kept creeping up the glass. Dad is buff! My dad entered the kitchen with long, measured steps. I want to have a beard like his when I grow up. Mom would always ask, jokingly, Come on, shave it off, it stings. This was so long ago. Nowadays, rumbling doors and witty comebacks were an everyday occurrence. 
Olya always covers her ears whenever she hears something like, What's the point in all this? Through the wall. It's all for your sake, Dad would reply. For the sake of our family. I always caught every sound in fear of hearing the most dreaded, the deadliest word that started with a D. D. I. V. O. I don't even want to finish it. It was scary to imagine that me and my little sister could be torn apart and taken into two different families. Anyway, your fox is nothing. I have an owl on my window. You and your owl talk again. You said you believed me just yesterday. Has anyone seen my car keys? I remember leaving them on the window, so... Right. Maybe you did, and maybe not. You're a grown man, a father of two, and still... Karina, please stop. Just let me get ready in peace. Your keys are in the basket near the phone. Well, thank you very much. Anton, stop making a martyr out of yourself and finish eating already. And the owl... There was no owl. But there was one. It had giant glowing eyes. Olya sprung up from the chair and placed her hands on her little face, imitating a pair of eyes with her fingers the size of an apple each. Last year, you had Baba in your closet, and now this owl... Oh, is this a thing I can click on? No. I thought that was like a, what What does this mean? But, but I saw it! Olya shifted her gaze back and forth from Dad to Mom to me, but couldn't find any support. Have you thought about befriending it? You know, like feeding it with imaginary mice. Don't bully our girl. She's just afraid to sleep alone because she's still little. Olya pouted her lips in rebellion and rushed into the hallway. The staircase that led to the second floor creaked. Mom gave Dad a strict look. Oh, that look in her eyes. It's so uncomfortable to be pinned under it. That's a face that means you done fucked up. Dad just snorted in reply and left, ringing with the keys he just found. A minute passed and this theme song from The Little Mermaid echoed through the house. It was stored on incredibly worn out... Whoops. It was stored on incredibly worn out cassette tape, which Dad already had to glue together once. That's pretty impressive, considering that if they broke when I had VHS tapes, because I was a child of the 90s, that uh, there kind of wasn't any fixing it. It's so easy to fix objects, by gluing them back together, for example. But how do you fix a relationship? Mom moved to the living room, and I was left alone, anxiously stealing glances at the window. Aww. Poor baby. Olya had trouble sleeping ever since we moved to this house. She would toss and turn, or curl up in a ball and... Oh gosh. Or curl up into a ball under her blanket. Sometimes she would jump up in the middle of night... Of the night, Jesus. And turn on the VCR. Cartoons helped to take her mind off all the troubles we had with the move and our parents. Hey! And then Olya said she saw that giant flying monster outside her window. Oh, poor Olya. She became obsessed with it. Our parents did everything in their power. They tried every little trick to get rid of those ridiculous fears. Olya refused to sleep alone and didn't believe that the owl was just one of her nightmares. After tonight, I was unsure what to make of my sister's words what to think of it myself. Can nightmares be infectious? Last night, I couldn't get a wink of sleep and ended up thinking of what to expect in my new school. There were a couple of days left for the beginning of a new term. I don't like this sinister music! 
My imagination drew long, twisting hallways that led to a classroom full of kids. But all the students behind their desks were simply dark figures, cut out using a template. Circular holes gaped in the middle of their faces, and pairs of eyes blinked inside those holes. It was as if some completely different creatures were looking at me from behind the flat, black silhouettes. Their cruel glares, filled with icy sneers, made me shiver from head to toe. Will I survive here? Won't they gang up on me and beat me down? Stomp on me with their bloodied shoes? Jesus. Damn school can burn for all I care. Did we have a really bad experience at a previous school? I just wished for anything to happen to it. Doesn't really matter what. I didn't want to go there that badly. I didn't want to see people who were just itching to smack me on the head, trip me up, think of a new offensive name for me. Worse than the previous one. Oh, we did have a bad experience at the previous school. I felt like the glasses I wore made me an outsider, or some sort of a monster. How uncommon can the glasses be that that's the thing that makes the kid- Well, I shouldn't say that. Kids will look for anything that you're uncomfortable about to destroy you with it because children are mean. My gaze slid across the drawings hanging on the wall. I couldn't consider myself a great artist, but Olya begged me to hang them. Drawing was the only thing that made me happy as of late. A small circle of friends I had also enjoyed my paintings, and they promised to call me from time to time. Sometimes I imagined Mom picking up the phone and saying in a cold voice, You've got the wrong number. Or, Anton is not around. Anton is not around. I imagined my future classmates lying in their beds, just like me, listening to the howls of invisible werewolves outside their windows. Maybe my new classmates will like me after all. But who would ever like a boy with thick glasses? A lot of people? I mean, my dad used to wear glasses when he was little, and now he's married to the most beautiful woman on the planet. My mom. The house creaked, pressed by the wind. The condo we used to live in, a nine-floor concrete building, buzzed with the neighbor's drill, mumbled with a set... Oh my gosh. Some of this is oddly phrased. (laughs) Buzzed with the neighbor's drill, mumbled with a TV set from behind the wall, cried like a baby from the big family next door. Our current house, though I can't really call it new, was completely different. It was silent and easygoing during the day. Its shadows lay dormant in the corners, on the closet cobwebs, and under the stairs. But they all woke up during the night. Something was watching me from every corner, almost as if the old photos of my diseased family. Shouldn't that say deceased? No, it says deceased. Hmm. Of my diseased family, with their ashen eyes, were hanging on the walls in place of my drawings. The floor was squeaking, rusty drains were moaning, the attic was occupied by noisy drafts. One could think the house was performing some sort of demonic melody. And then I realized I was, in fact, hearing music. It was already playing for a good while. Somewhere at the edge of my perception, I could hear a flute. It was mixed in with the sound of the wind, of the creaking old house, and my thoughts, too. I stood up and rushed to the window. I wanted to reassure myself that this music was nothing more than a product of my imagination. It's not like someone's playing it there, amidst the cold, snowy night. Right? Oh, I get the option to open. That is a bright... Oh! Before I go on, look at that. There's somebody out there playing some kind of instrument, and there's a whole bunch of animals flipping out. Huh. Someone was dancing in the field. Black silhouettes I could barely make out, with the dark forest as their backup. They jumped around, basked in moonlight, bumped into piles of snow, rolled around, and crawled on all fours. I'm gonna sneeze. Stories about wolves playing under the moon came to mind, but these were clearly not wolves. 
They stood upright at times, circled around holding hands and whipping up snow, disappearing into the shadows for a brief moment and then coming back. I'd almost hazard that they, like, a guess that they were bears, because bears like to wander around on their hind legs, but they don't hold hands and dance in circles. I do like the animation of that fox, also, that keeps flipping over there. <laughs> it's really cute. Something bizarre was going on. Shadows dancing in the starless abyss made my imagination go wild, making me anxious at the same time. Suddenly, the music had stopped. Oh, dear. The dancing shadows froze in place, and I could swear, pierced me with their eyes. One of the silhouettes immediately parted from the bizarre shadow carnival and sprinted across the field with giant leaps. <gasps> oh, shit! <laughs> it glided on squeaky snow, without leaving any prints until it was devoured by the pitch-black shadow of my house, which became even darker and thicker. My heart was jumping around like the bird inside a cage. I shut the curtains with a swift motion and stepped back towards the bed. Oh, I like how that faded in like it does when you turn the light off in your room when it's dark. Oh, I don't like this music! They saw me. A freezing torrent of fear washed over me. I stood in the middle of a perfectly dark room and listened to some unwanted guest move and scrape around looking for an entrance. The sound moved to the right and circled around the house. Now my guest should be at the front door. I jumped into the bed and covered myself with the blankets, as if it could protect me. The shackles of fear locked my muscles. I remembered the funeral, my grandma laying there, hands cl oh my gosh, hands crossed on her chest, her facial features sharp like that of a tin doll. Ants running up and down the legs of chairs that held my grandma's casket. What funeral did you go to? I imagined those little creatures climbing up her head and pulling up her eyelids with their tiny legs. Then her wrinkly eyeballs would once again move inside their sockets and she'd be able to see her grandchildren. I was chanting the spell she taught me through the whole procedure. And now, laying under the blanket and listening to squeaks and howls, I was repeating the same words. On the island of Buyan, under the blemished sun, in the sea of colored blue, stands a cabin made of wood. There lay lard and ashen hair for the spawn from devil's lair to feast and always leave alone God's faithful servant, servant named Anton. Evil leave this house must. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Bizarre sounds had disappeared. I cautiously peeked out from under the blanket and saw curtains waving around like a hangman. And then the night doused me in the new portion of boiling terror. The sound scratched at my eardrums. In reality, something or someone was scratching at the front door, hurriedly clawing at wood, demanding to be let in. The door was shut. Dad had become very cautious recently, so he installed a sturdy lock. I remember him staring at the forest intently, as if he was looking for someone. Does Dad know of the demons that play in the night? Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. I hugged my knees placing my chin between them, and drilled the door with my eyes. It was so flimsy and weak before the might of darkness. And then... Hey! The doorknob twitched, slightly. Then it turned halfway. Once. Twice. As if the person who tried to enter had no hands. The doorknob tilted once more, and then... started clicking violently. My jaw cramped from fear. My wet fingers clutched the blanket. The door creaked and opened. The wind taunted me, moaning inside the tin drains. Now... Now you'll see. The door was wide open. The darkness writhed inside the cavernous mouth of a doorway. It was as if the night itself was calling out to me, flapping its black wings and squeaking with rusty hinges. I was trembling, ensnared by the web of darkness that hung in the corners of my room, waiting for the one who weaved it to come out of the gaping black hole. Tony. 
my abdomen tightened, and my chest rose up, ready to exhale a desperate scream. But before I was able to do anything, the darkest... Oh my gosh, the darkness asked me. Tony, you asleep? My sister's pale face protruded from the thick shadows. I almost screamed from relief. Olya, I, I'm not sleeping. Did something happen? Olya frowned and stuck out her lower lip, a clear sign that she was about to cry. It's there again, staring at me. Sure away, Tony, please. I'm so scared. The fear that was tormenting me just a minute ago crawled away and hid somewhere in my stomach. I needed to calm Olya down. It was just a dream, silly. Don't be scared. Dreams don't bite. No one's going to harm you. Olya sobbed. She was trying her best to believe me. But was I sure myself? I have an idea. Let's go to your room and watch the video, Sleeping Beauty, for example. You like that cartoon, don't you? Why does the Sleeping Beauty have a prince and I have this scary bird? The question took me by surprise. All right, let's watch Cinderella. My thoughts became tangled, fuzzy. What was that? What study me with its eyes while dancing fervor- Oh my god, feverishly under the moon. The darkness was clinging to the window, and it couldn't be fooled by Grandma's old chants. It couldn't be satisfied with the feast of lard and long ashen hair. Tony, you coming? Yes. Just a moment. Hey! And then I died, I guess! Okay! <laughs> okay! That's why I didn't want to laugh at Olya and her owl in the morning. Who could be visiting us here in the middle of nowhere? Oh no, that's not Mom, that's Anton. Who could be visiting us here, in the middle of nowhere? We don't know anyone around here. Ding dong! So persistent. I felt extremely unsettled just from a silly thought that our morning guests could have come from the woods. I could barely hear voices coming from the front door. My mind was urging me to hide. In the closet. Under the table. Behind the curtains, where Olya always hides. Tony? Come here! I felt like kettlebells were tied to my feet, but still dragged them towards the hallway. I don't know what a kettlebell is. I will look that up later. Also, I've noticed the cool dinosaur stickers on the fridge. I had those when I was little. <gasps> it's the police! A couple of policemen towered over me in the doorway. They smelled like frost and worry. My mom always winced and grumbled the moment she saw patrol cars. Worse than bandits. At the moment, though, she looked somewhat confused. Hello. The senior officer, who wore, who wore a grim expression, nodded. A boy's gone missing yesterday. His name is Vova. Look at this, please. Have you seen him? The policeman held out a photograph to me. A boy and his Kate. There was a ginger boy, around the age of elementary school, pictured with a wall carpet as the backdrop. He had a striped cat in his hands and wore a wide smile. No, I haven't. Are you sure? Please look closely. Where would I see him? I don't know anyone around here. I barely leave the house. Well, maybe you've seen him from the window? That's right. Your windows look straight at the forest, don't they? The window. 
No, I haven't seen anything. I see. He sounded tired, but his eyes... He stared long and heavy. Oh my gosh, his stare, long and heavy, was full of suspicion. I squirmed unwittingly under the weight of guilt which his giant shadow cast over me. We didn't see a kid, though. The policeman finally tore his eyes from me and glanced over the hallway, the stairway, and the cracks in the ceiling, which I hadn't noticed before for some reason. How do you like your new place, by the way? Getting used to it. Bit by bit, it's just our little daughter misses the city a lot. Misses the city, huh? Have the locals been treating you well? Yes, everything is all right. Thank you. What an odd thing to ask. The policeman pierced through me one more time with his gray eyes. My head started spinning. Uh, can I help you somehow? I asked in a shaky voice to look like a polite boy and to end this unpleasant conversation sooner. Why do they act like they're so suspicious of me? I am a child! I'm a wee little glasses boy who doesn't leave the house. What do you want from me? Now that I think about it, you look just like one of my nephews, little fella. Oh, okay. He's a witty boy around your age. Wears the same type of goggles. <laughs> Always engrossed in reading those mystery novels. Why do people assume that because a child has glasses that they're a giant nerd? I mean, I'm a nerd, and I don't wear glasses. Told me he wants to enroll in police school when his family visited this summer. Wanted to help other people, just like me, see? I felt uncomfortable, as if a distant relative and not a police officer stood before me. It is a weird thing to say. You know what? Little boys like you should stay at home. Steer away from trouble. The times have changed so much. Mom interjected in a cold voice. You don't say. Ah, well then. What grade you in, Tony boy? Sixth. Have you made any friends here so far? I haven't even gone to school yet. Why is this an interrogation? Not yet. I'll be going to school for the first time after the break. Ah, then I'll leave you my number, just in case. Call me, if you have any new info. Like what, I'm going to discover that the children have been secretly whisking each other away into some horrible network of crime? I'm pretty sure telling you that wild beasties in the woods ate them, specifically ones that dance, is probably not what you're looking for, but okay. Okay, bye! The policemen were gone, along with their shadows, the smell of cheap cologne, and the photo of a smiling boy. His face still stood before my eyes. I wondered what it was like for him, being all alone. There. For some reason, I thought of the forest, swaying in the wind. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers over on Patreon, and give a special shout out to Jack Fox, Old Monster, Dizarin, and Jan Shillen. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Like what you saw? Have thoughts you want to share? Let me know in a comment. Want to help my channel grow? Then share with your friends or subscribe so that you never miss a new video. If you'd like to help me out and get some neat rewards, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, you guys. I really couldn't do it without you.